So just a quick um, intro scene setter. Thank you everyone for attending. Really appreciate it, especially considering the Melbourne weather. Um, yeah, so here for the mural, obviously. Um, this is part of the uh, commemoration for Jamie McLaren breaking the Isuzu Utes um, A-League's goal-scoring record, overtaking Bessart Berisha. Uh, the process was Jamie selected his um, his image, his photo that he wanted up there. That was then handed to Hannah, um, the s uh, fellow star Melbourne City uh, striker. She then sketched the design, which you see behind us. Um, it was quite the process. Um, I made it sound a lot easier than what it was, but. Um, I'll let them uh, explain um, how it unfolded, but um, yeah, it went a lot quicker than um, than what we planned. Pretty much because uh, Hannah is an absolute gun artist. So, um, in addition to being a gun footballer, so um, yeah, we'll just get some opening remarks from each of them, and then yeah, you can uh, you can take it away. What do you reckon, Jamie? Yeah, love it. Uh, I said to Hannah before, it's special to you know grow up in this city, and never did I think a kid from Sunbury would have something so big at Richmond Station, which is so iconic and down the road from somewhere where I do my, my best work. So, you know, I'm, I'm honoured that, uh, that Hannah took the job to do it and um, she's a fantastic striker and fantastic person for our football club and uh, it's a great little relationship that we've got going and um, yeah, just grateful that she could get the job over the line and, and as you can see, she's, uh, yeah, it's blowing my mind. Hannah, uh, what made you want to take on this job and what do you reckon of how it's all turned out? Yeah, I mean, look, it was an amazing opportunity um, that was brought forward to me and I jumped at the chance. I started designing straight away. Um, wanted to really get Jamie's details. You know, I got the photo that he really loved and it's an amazing picture. Like, I love to capture energy and passion um, in, in, in my work. And so this was a perfect photo to kind of capture that. Um, and yeah, so we managed to get it underway. I worked with an amazing uh, street artist from Sydney called Adam and he absolutely nailed it. He did the top, th top sort of uh, two uh, top top and I did like the the bottom third um, and yeah he absolutely smashed it and um, we worked together and he taught me a lot about um, this kind of work it's my second major sort of mural and so yeah I'm stoked with how it came together and I'm just uh, it's a real privilege to be able to do that for someone like Jamie he inspires me a lot as a footballer as well so yeah I was stoked. And it looks very superhero, like self shading, the sun behind him, all that. Was that sort of the vibe you were going for? Yeah, absolutely. So I've been very inspired by kind of DC Marvel comic book styles, and um, yeah, that's what I really wanted to emulate. Um, yeah, it came out amazing, so I'm stoked. How do you feel about being portrayed as a superhero? Yeah, I don't know if I'll go that far. Um, <laughs> I'll take the greatest goal scorer, but that's as far as it's going to be. Uh, yeah, it's, it's special for me and my family, and um, you know, when I came around the corner and saw it, it was uh, something amazing. I've, I've still got goosebumps to know that uh, you know it's going to be up here for as long as it's going to be. And uh, yeah, special for me. Like that. Really hey, J Mac, what does that say about you? That that image, that sort of pose. Uh, that celebration. was a yeah. That was a, a goal I scored in a derby, Clint, and uh, probably one of my favourite goals against Melbourne Victory. And um, to celebrate in front of our fans and just the way I've portrayed passion and. You know, I love this football club and uh, I know what it means in derby games and played in some big ones and that's my favourite photo and it's captured by the great man right here and um, yeah, it's a, a special image and you know, to, to see what Hannah's done is, is, is amazing. As you say, if you're a Melbourne, a Melbourne kid, a Sunbury kid and a lot of people are going to see this as they're heading to various sporting events around this sporting city, yeah. what, is, what does that sort of mean to you? More than I probably could express. Um, you know, I've, I've got goosebumps, like I said, and uh, to know that you know people going to work or coming out of the station just here, it's going to be a lot of eyes, and that's something good for our game. But um, you know, for myself to know that I'm having this sort of impact, and it was, uh, it's in, the, it's in the photo there, it just says in the dream. So you know, this, this has been a dream of mine to become great in this league, and um, you know, I don't think I've still got a lot of improving to go, but I know that um, being the top goal scorer uh, all time now is is a special moment, and and one that uh, I don't continue on um, stopping anytime soon. How confident does all this have you feeling heading into finals where it all really counts? Yeah, the inner beast is coming out. Um, I would say that, you know, it's when I broke the toe, it was kind of a bit of a feeling, you know, I went four games or five games without a goal and, you know, question marks were being were being set and, and rightly so, you know, I rarely go through a patch like that and um, I knew that I had to stay on my path and stay confident and 
to hit three in one night, I knew that uh, I was doing all the right things and you always get rewarded in weird ways and to win it on one night it was special and um, I'm ready for the finals now. Just, just on 143, what, what do you put all those goals down to? How, how have you been able to score so many goals? Discipline. Uh, you know, I, I, I know I'm not the the most talented footballer, but I know that um, you know I've worked for my ability and worked to, to really become the player that I am today and the person. And I've got a great support around me. And when you've got that, you've got great people, a great club, uh, and great teammates that that look after you and want the best for you. Um, it's pretty easy to go out there on a weekend and try and bang in goals. And um, yeah, I've worked tirelessly after training on my finishing and trying to improve all aspects of my game. And um, that's what I put it down to. Just Are there any players that you yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I played with Shane Smells. You know, he's on the list. I played against Marisha. You know, and I've had that pressure internally, but um, you know, growing up, I had Michael Owen as my my, my idol. And um, as I got older, we started to be you know Sergio Aguero, who plays for Manchester City and, and scored you know bag full of goals on a regular in the Premier League. And you know, I'm not not gifted with the with the height and and size, so. I've got to work on my instincts and, and when the ball's in the box, be as dangerous as I can. And I don't think there's anyone as deadly as, as me inside the box. Um, but outside the box, it's a different story and that's something I've been working on. But um, you can only work with what you've been given. And, and um, yeah, I want to try and win another trophy for this football club because they've been great to me. And uh, yeah, we'll see how the next few weeks pan out. Hey Hannah, what, what do you admire about the bloke you, you painted and how much pressure did you feel painting it? Oh look, it was, you know, I didn't feel too much pressure. I was just stoked with the opportunity. Yeah. Um, you know, I work under passion, and when I'm passionate about something, it kind of just happens. Um, like I said earlier, I'm really inspired by Jamie the way he plays. Um, playing for City, we play kind of under the similar playbook, and as nines, we have a responsibility to put away uh, chances that are carefully created by our team um, systematically. It's a very patient way of playing, and and we have it's the same responsibility. Um, and I hope to be just as deadly as him, especially with this up upcoming World Cup. Um, yeah, he's incredible. Um, I love to watch him, he's magic. And you mentioned the World Cup, so you've been sticking around here doing the mural, but what do your next few months look like now as you prepare to represent the first? Yeah, so you know, he scored the, broke the record at the right time, you know, right as our season came to a close, and I've just been offloading after a bunch of season games. I've just been to Turkey with New Zealand, so it was good timing. Um, I head to New Zealand very soon for a domestic camp leading into World Cup. We're really putting in the work now and it's, it's going to be amazing. I can't wait. Jamie, you've got Sydney FC coming up on the weekend. It's maybe a bit of an upset, but we know what they can do, especially defensively, like yeah. Will Cole and the like. How do you shape up against them, do you reckon? Yeah, Sydney's a, a well-coached team. Uh, they've got a, another deadly striker in, in, in Alfie. And, um, you know, they've been around the block a lot of times in final series and, and you saw that the other night that, you know, throughout the season they probably haven't had the results or, or you know, confidence that they wanted to have, but in final series they've been there before and um, they've got the experienced heads, like, like you said, Wilco and, and players like that to really um, get them through big, big moments and big games and I look forward to playing against those guys and uh, it'll be a cracking game, obviously it's a, a, a two-legged thing, so you go there, try and get a result and you bring it home to Melbourne, which We've been fantastic at home, and uh, yeah, it's final series now. Anything can happen. It's it's almost as if the season form goes out the window, and it's who turns up on the nights. And we saw that last year. You know, we were the we were the best team throughout the year, but we lost in the grand final. So we want to right that wrong, and, and we know that um, 26 rounds, in a way, we've got the premiers played. It means nothing now. It's down to who turns up and, and plays the 90 minutes or 120, whatever it may be, and um, and puts the chances away and, and makes the least amount of mistakes. And we've also got Socceroos International window coming up. The reports of it might be in China, but against Argentina. Um, is that something that you'd be, because obviously you missed the last window with injury, you'd be targeting a return to the tight side for that? Yeah, possibly. Um, yeah, that's news to me. I, I, I thought it might have been Uruguay or something like that. That's, that's, what, I, that's what I well. did here as well. And um, Yeah, as far as I'm aware, I've had no conversations about the Socceroos or what's, what's ahead in June. but. Yeah, ultimately my, my next focus, we've got three games left to go in Melbourne City in our eyes um, and we need to make sure it's, it's going to be three games and it starts on Friday night. So um, yeah, bring it on and we look forward to going to Sydney, a place that we, we like going. Um, 
and playing against a team that wants to play football as well. Uh, it's final series, there'll be chances. I know I'll get chances and I know that probably Alfie will get chances and it's down to um, which strikers take their chances and um, yeah, it's a second leg thing so we'll be back here on uh, the following Friday night. Jamie, do you expect uh, Matt Lecky out there starting? He's been, uh, you've had some great combinations this year, is he going to start? I think so, I think he's ready. You know, Lex is the sort of player that um, you know, all he needs is a week or two of training and he came on and, and done really well. He's, he's a beast of a guy, his body's a machine and um, you know, when he plays we are a better team and um, whether he plays as like a number 10 or out wide on the left, um, you know, Lex has, has shown some amount of versatility this year where you know he can play even deeper than that if he has to be. He's just a quality player and um, he does make our squad better and um, I think we've got all our bodies back. I could be wrong but um, I don't want to step on Rado's toes but I believe that a lot of our boys are back and hungry and, and when finals come around uh, you throw everything at it and uh, I think that's what we'll do. You mentioned your inner beast. Does it feel like this City team's got that ready to sort of charge and just roll through finals? I yeah I believe so. I think we, we let ourselves down in a few games in, in the season you know, in a way, probably could have won the Premier's Plate a bit earlier, but um, to do it how we did it was, was also special. And um, it's another trophy which we take pride in to, to be in a Champions League again. And that's another campaign that we want to, to really take take seriously. And, um, you know, that's obviously going to be next year, but our full focus is on, on Friday night. And we know we've got two Fridays of, of big games, uh, 180 minutes. And uh, yeah, we'll be giving everything. We won't be uh, holding anything back. Back up home. Home final um, in a couple of weeks' time. Just your message to the fans: maybe come out of Swan Street, have a beer, have a feed, come down, have a yeah. photo with the mural, and then get out of the state. Yeah, or go have a beer at the precinct over there and walk past. And, um, <laughs> yeah, we want our fans to turn out. We, um, yeah, we know the situation at the moment. With, with, if there is a grand final to be played, it won't be played in Melbourne, and um, it'll be the last time that our fans can watch us in our home, uh, where we do our best work and where. You know, I score the goals and, and our, play, our team plays some good football. So please come out. Uh, we need you at the end of the day um, to get to a grand final has, has, been, has been a difficult journey and um, we need our fans to, to really come out and, and support us next Friday night. But we'll try and do the business this Friday and, um, and come home with a positive result, and, which won't be easy, but we'll do our utmost best to, to do that. And next Friday, uh, we need them to be our 13th man for sure. How's it You're city? playing Sydney FC, the, la the A-League's last real dynasty now. We recently had the discussion around Sydney's women's team. If they were a dynasty, if they were winning all these premierships without grand finals, you're now coming up into another grand final. You've played in a lot, but only one championship from those in Mercedes men's. Do you feel like you really need to add that title to put a bow on this sustained period of dominance this side has had? Yeah, maybe. Um, you know, this is in this country we play final series. It, it is what it is. Um, we've been the best team over. You know, what is it? 76 games. We've probably been the best team. So. We take a lot of pride in that, but we know that in this league you have to play final series. And in a way, to add another string to our bow, like you said, we need to start turning up in bigger, bigger games. And um, you know, we're not we're not even talking about the grand final now because we've got to get past a very good Sydney FC side who knocked off a very good Wanderers side. So we know we're going to be up against it. Uh, they're a well-coached team. Um, they've been around for a long time, and uh, they're not going to be easy because they've played a lot of finals football. And um, you know, it's, it's going to be a difficult game, and uh, we expect that. So. There's no, uh, there's no overconfidence from us. We just keep our head down and, and work hard and, and try and get ourselves into another grand final and um, show the big game players uh, what it's about. How have you tackled the grand final issue, Jamie? Like, I know it's been a fair few months since it all sort of boiled over. Um, do you try and put it behind you? Do you just acknowledge that it's there, that you won't get to host a grand final if you're there again this year? Yeah, I think there's been a lot of time since since that decision. So we've, we've obviously had enough time to process it. Um, and you know, you saw that we, we want to play in a grand final and we know it's not going to be in Melbourne, but um, as much as you're, you're probably disappointed as Melbourne players and being a Melbourne uh, growing up here, it's, we've earned the right to host it, but it is what it is. And we have to then put our head down and, and really focus on, on getting to a grand final first. And um, you know, whatever will be, will be. And uh, I think there's going to be some sort of big week ahead for that. So look, as a player, all you can control is, is what's on the pitch. And when you cross that white line, um, you're determined to win for your club, for your fans and for your members and for your sponsors and, and whatever. So um, it's going to be a huge couple of weeks and, and we look to, uh, yeah, to, to get into another grand final and, and try and go one better. And uh, you played under Rado for a number of years now and you made the transition to the men's. Are you surprised at how well, it seems to have quickly he's adapted and succeeded? 
look, I'm, I'm not surprised. I think Rudd is fantastic. Um, I was just talking to Jamie about him earlier. He's one of the best coaches I've had. Um, I played one of the best seasons of my career under him. So I think he's a terrific coach. He's very, very smart. Um, yeah, I, I think he's, he's done really well. And I, you know, I'm, I'm really happy for him with the success he's achieved. Um, obviously, we miss him, mm. selfishly. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm stoked for him. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thank you. Also, uh, we'll get a bit of um, 